Welcome Connection Kids. The first song we are going to sing today is My Redeemer Lives. Please feel free to stand up and join us.
going to be doing Lead Me to the Cross. Please join us. Morning Connection kids. I'm so glad you could join us this morning. And guess what? It's a great season. It's the Easter season. And we got some great lessons coming for you. We have four part lessons that's coming. We're going to do two this week and then two next week. So we have Miss Gina, myself, Miss Diane, and Miss Carol are going to come bring the lessons for you. And it's kind of a different lesson that we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about resurrection eggs. I know it sounds kind of weird, resurrection eggs. So you're going to find out. I want you to stick around. But first, let's go ahead and go to our Bible verse for today. And our Bible verse comes from 2 Corinthians. It's actually 2 Corinthians 5, 17. So let's go over our verse together. Say it with me. Anyone who believes in Christ is a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. So what does that mean? So let's go over the verse. Let's break it down. So here's what it says. Anyone who believes in Christ. So if you believe in Christ and you've accepted him in your heart, you become a new creation. Now, obviously, there ain't no way I can get any younger. I'm not going to be young like you guys. Obviously, you can tell all the wrinkles. I'm getting a little old. So I'm not going to get young. So what does that mean? 
Well, it's talking about if I accept Jesus in my heart, my spirit, my insides, me, I become a new creation in him. I become a new life in him. Just like a small child is, I become new that I can glorify him and worship him. And the old stuff that I used to do when I used to, you know, I know I sin all the time, but I used to do worse things. I didn't even care what I did. I used to lie and cheat and do all kinds of weird things, bad stuff. That stuff goes away. We get rid of that. We throw that away and we say, you know what? I'm going to live for you, Jesus, for here today and forever. My life is in you. And I come to him every day and say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. So let's go over to the verse again. This is 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Anyone who believes in Christ is a new creation, and the old has gone away. The new has come. So I want you to hide that in your heart, and we're going to study it for the next two weeks. Put that in your heart. Put that in there so you understand that if you've accepted him, you're a new creation too. So now I'm going to ask Miss Abigail to come and join us, and she's going to pray for our tithe. Don't forget your tithe boxes to fill each week, and Mr. Richard is ordering more, and they will come soon. Let us pray. Mm. Dear God, thank you for letting those who can join us today, and thank you for providing te the technology so we can be together. And please let us bring our tithe to you to give back to you what you've given to us. And thank you so much for all your love and amen. mercy you have given to us. Amen. 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 Thank you, Ms. Abigail. So again, those tithe boxes, the offering boxes, if you have one at home, remember to fill it up, or if you don't have one, go ahead and collect your offering, and you can bring it later on the next time we get to meet. I'm going to try to get some together for you that will be in your packet. We're ordering some new ones right now, so they will be here. Now, we will also have just a couple of announcements. Now, remember, we couldn't go to the California Science Center like we wanted to. That's okay. We're going to hopefully make it up. We can't do it in April, but maybe in May, maybe. We might have to wait till the summertime. We might have to postpone it. So, you know, I'll keep you informed, try to update you with the new, but we still haven't forgot. We're still going to go to the California Science Center somehow, some way. So put that on the back burner and we'll come to it. So right now we're going to get into some awesome new lessons. So we're going to do part one today and part two. I'm going to do part one and Ms. Jean is going to do part two of our resurrec resurrection eggs. Let me say that right, resurrection eggs. So get ready and get ready to buckle up. We're going to have some good lessons. Hello, my name is Arlene Bell. Welcome to Weirder Things, the show that explores the strange, the unknown, and the just plain odd. My guest tonight is a chicken farmer who recently found some strange and unusual things in the chicken coop. Please welcome Ernie Portney. How you doing? Chicken farmer here. All right. Oh, let's see. Well, hello, Ernie. Tell us about your chickens. Well, man, there's not that much to tell. You know, they're big, they're white, they're fat, you know, gordo. Hey, you like that Spanish? <laughs> and they're really making a lot of noise, you know what I'm saying? And recently they sent you a message? Yeah, they did. You see, my chickens, they, they lay a couple eggs every day. Hmm. Well, what kind of eggs? Well, naturally, the white and brown ones like everything else. But until this one day, it was really weird. The older chicken named Betsy... She laid here, check this egg out. She laid this here colored egg. Hmm, that's really pretty. I like the color. Yeah, you're telling me. That's just crazy. Look at that. And then check this out. This egg here, Cindy, she laid this colored egg. Oh, my. And then it gets even crazier. Check this out. Snowflake. I love Snowflake. She got a little weird. And she got even more prettier. Look at this egg. Wow. Weird, I know, huh? I never saw anything like this in my life. Neither have I. As a matter of fact, those eggs don't even look like normal eggs. They look plastic. You know what? They are. And check this out. They are. Check this out. Look at this first one here. Look for yourself. And the first one here, this plastic egg, there's a donkey. Hmm. Isn't that weird? That I don't know what a donkey doing on an egg like that. I don't know what you're trying to tell me. And then check out, this is Cindy's egg. Cindy's egg, she's laying me some money. Hey, look at that. Huh? Wow. Some silver. That's kind of nice, huh? I don't know what's going on there. And then Snowflake, she got kind of weird. And then she laid this weird old little thing, this little old cup. I don't know, who's going who to use this cup? Uh, that Ernie, that really is pretty amazing. Uh, do you know what this means? Matter of fact, I don't. Hmm. I have no idea. Well, who rode into town on the back of a donkey? And who was betrayed by his friends for 30 pieces of silver? Mm. And who took a cup and blessed it and passed it and said, do this in remembrance of me? 
I don't know. Well, Ernie, it was Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. He rode into the city of Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, and he was riding on a donkey, oh, like a king right. who came in peace. He was betrayed by Judas, mm. one of his very own, one of his 12 disciples. He's the one that betrayed him. Now, why did he do that? Well, because Judas didn't have God's plans in mind. Mm. He wanted Jesus to do things his way. You know, the same way we do sometimes when we disobey God's word. Judas agreed mm -hmm. to turn Jesus over to men who wanted to harm him for 30 pieces of silver. Oh, no, poor guy. But what about the cup? Well, Jesus knew he was going to be betrayed and killed. That's why he took the cup. Mm -hmm. And he blessed it, and this is what he said. This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, which will be poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He knew he was going to die, and he was God? And he didn't even stop them? Why? Well, it was all part of God's plan. Mm. Jesus took our place when he died on the cross. He set the perfect example of obedience by following his father's plan to sacrifice himself for us, all of us. It was the perfect example of love. Oh, I get it. And now the cup, we do it in remembrance of him for his obedience and his perfect love. That's right. Sounds to me like your chickens wanted to give you something to help you remember all that Jesus has done for you. I certainly won't forget it. Well, I hope none of my viewers will forget it either. Oh, I hope you'll come back and see us again. You do, but why? Well, because we've just now started Easter. Hmm. You know, the time when we remember what Jesus has done for us. Yeah. I have a feeling your chickens have a whole lot more to share with you. Well, if they do, you'll be the first one to know. Well, we'll see all of you next time on Weirder Things. See you later. All right, you guys ready for part one of Resurrection Eggs? So I have a question for you. What do you expect to get on Easter when you go and you find one of these? An egg. What do you find in an egg normally? What do you think? Think about that for a minute. Hmm. You should find sometimes maybe candy, all kinds of different kinds of candy, maybe M&M's, Skittles, so maybe Hershey Kisses. And sometimes you get lucky and you find money in there, which is even better. But you find all kinds of things in Easter eggs on Easter Sunday. Well, we're going to talk about some different kind of eggs today, resurrection eggs. And what does that have to do with Easter? So let's find out. We're going to get into part one, and I'm going to tell you what it's all about. So pay attention. So. First of all, our bottom line of our lesson today is very important. It says that Jesus is the perfect example of true love and obedience. So what does that mean? That he's the perfect example of true love and obedience. So while we're going through our lesson, I want you to put that in your head. What does that mean, how he's the perfect love and obedience? Let's find out. So I want to give you, let's, let's think about in the story here. I got a very special part of the story. And in the special part of the story, we have Jesus... He comes riding in on a donkey. Isn't that weird? And here's the question. If you see the screen behind me, does anybody know what this part of the story is all about? A donkey. How would a donkey deal with anything about Easter? So let's find out what it says in the scriptures. This is called preparing for Palm Sunday. And I want you to pay attention. I want you to see on the screen as I read it out loud. This comes from the Gospel of Luke. Now, if you remember, Luke, remember, he was not a disciple. He did not walk with Jesus, but he was a physician. And here's what he wrote. This is Luke 19, 28 through 40. Here's what it says. After Jesus said to them, and he's talking to the disciples, he went ahead going up to Jerusalem. And he approached Beth, uh, Bethphage, excuse me, and Bethany as he called on Mount of Olives. He sent two disciples saying to them, go to a village ahead of you, and there you will enter and you will collect a colt tied up there. Which one is never written. So it's a brand new colt, basically a baby donkey, a young donkey. Okay, and he says, untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you untying this? You're going to say that the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead of you will found it as just as they had told. So they went and they found this colt. And they untied it and the owner asked, hey, why are you untying my donkey? Or colt, and the same thing. They replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus. They took their cloaks and then they put it over the colt and they put Jesus on it. 
as he went along, people spread their cloaks along the road. So people were taking off their coats, their jackets, kind of what we call a jacket today, and they were putting it along the road. And when he came near the place where the road goes to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise the Lord in a loud voice for all the miracles they had seen and done. This is what they were saying. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Actually, they were, some of them were even saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, which means peace in heaven and glory in the highest. So it's an awesome term as well as you can see in the scripture. And that actually is stated in the, in the Gospel of Mark. But here in Luke it says, Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, you need to rebuke these disciples. And Jesus said, I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, even the stones will cry out. So we see in this part of the story, preparing for Palm Sunday, that he rode in on a donkey. Or in the scriptures here, it says colt, which meaning a very young donkey. Why did he come in on a donkey? What would be the purpose? What's the point? So here's a picture of him writing in. Here's some, uh, uh, an artist who uh, drew this beautiful painting of him writing in, as you can see there, with a young little boy praising his hands, raising his hands, saying, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. So, why did Jesus ride in in Jerusalem on a donkey? That's an interesting question. And if we think about it, a lot of times when somebody rode into uh, um, a big town after maybe, or, or a journey to be praised or whatever, a lot of times like kings would ride in on horses to show their power and, and being majestic. And God obviously is majestic and powerful but he was showing in that he was coming into town, that he's coming for a sense of peace. So when you remember that, he rode in on a donkey to show that he came in for peace, not of war, but to come for peace. So it represents peace. So the first egg that we have represents peace. Now let's go to our second egg. What would the second egg represent in our story? So let's take a look at this screen here. In the second egg, as you can see, there's a set of coins, and they're actually silver coins in the Easter story. What in the world would coins have to do in our story? Let's find out as we get into the scripture today. Our scripture is Matthew 26, 14 through 16. Jesus agrees to betray Jesus. So we see that Judas, which was one of the disciples, decides to betray Jesus. Let's find out. Then it says, One of the twelve, the one called Jesus Iscariot, went to the chief priest and asked, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? Referring to Jesus. Deliver Jesus over you. So they counted out him 30 pieces of silver. From then on, Judas watched from an opportunity to hand him over. So Jesus made a deal to go ahead and he made a deal with the Pharisees. And he says, you know what, I'm going to hand them over to you. I'm going to show you who Jesus is. That way you can come get him. And he did it for just 30 pieces of silver. How crazy is that? That's the second egg. Why would he do that? So if here's, a, here's a description or a little picture, of, uh, as you can see, of uh, showing uh, Judas here uh, with his coins but just 30 pieces of silver, which isn't very much, but for something that's really bad. So that's the question is, why did Judas betray Jesus? What was the point? Why would Judas have to do this? And I want to read this to you. It says, Judas was filled with sin, and we're all filled with sin, but he allowed it to overcome his heart. And Judas was one of his disciples, and Judas was with every Jesus every step of the way. For three years he was with him. He did what Jesus wanted him to. Jesus wasn't going, uh, Jesus, um, excuse me, Jesus wasn't doing what Judas thought he should be doing to save Israel. Jesus had come to fulfill the Father plans, but not what Jesus wanted, not what Jude, uh, excuse me, Judas wanted. Jesus was there to obey his Father, not come to obey what Judas wanted him to do, to come and overtake Israel, which is what he thought. So Judas is a little upset. And Jesus didn't have God's plans in mind. He wanted his own way. And we are all guilty of that. We always want to go our own way. We're selfish, just like Judas was selfish. We want to do things our own way. We deliberately disobey God, which we call sin. And that's what sin did. Sepa sin separates us from God. And the way, and the way back that we see that we, uh, from the very beginning, we see that in, in Genesis when it first happened, when we saw Adam and Eve, the disobedience. We disobey God and we want to do things our own way. Thankfully, Jesus didn't go through with that. And Jesus wanted to obey God. And he shows us his perfect love. That brings us to the third egg. So 
So let's find out what is in the third egg. So the first egg, let's review for a minute. The first egg had a donkey, so Jesus rode on a donkey to show peace. The second egg shows us some 30 silver coins that represents Judas betraying Jesus because he didn't like what Jesus was doing, that he didn't want to come in and start war against the Romans, but it didn't happen that way. Jesus came for peace. So let's find out what happens in the third egg, this strange egg here. So let's take a look. Look at that. In the third egg, there's a little cup. A little cup. Why would there be a little cup in the third egg? What does the cup represent for the Easter story? Let's find out as we read the scriptures here. Let's go to the Last Supper. This is found in Matthew 26, 17 through 30. Okay, here's what it says. On the first day of the festival of the unleavened bread, that's kind of why you see the bread in the background of the cup there, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want to make preparations to eat the Passover? So this is talking about a time in, back in when the, um, the Israelites were over in Egypt. And basically, there, uh, there was a passing over of the Spirit. And this is a representation of the time. They had to put blood on top of the doorpost so they would pass over and not kill the firstborn. So it's called the Passover. He replied, go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time is near. I'm going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at their house or at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus told them, directed them, and prepared the Passover. So that's where they told them to do. Jesus told them that. When the evening came, Jesus reclined at a table with the twelve. So he was there for all the twelve disciples. And while he was eating, he said, and here's what he said, pay attention, very important. Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him, one after another, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. They were all afraid. Not me, not me. We kind of already heard who betrayed him, right? Well, Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to the man who betrays the Son of Man. It will be better for him to have not been born. Then Judas, remember we talked about that already, we know he betrayed him. Judas, the one who betrayed him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. Meaning, you, yep, it's going to be you. While they were eating, they took the bread, so they took a piece of bread. And when they had given to him, he broke it. So Jesus took the bread and he broke it with him. And he gave it to his disciples. He passed the bread around. Everyone took a piece of bread. Taking it, and he, says, he said to his disciples, Take this and eat this. This represents my body. So he passed it around, and everyone took the bread and ate it. Then he took the cup. So you see the little cup in the egg. Obviously, his cup was bigger. He took a cup, and he, and he gave thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is the blood and the covenant for which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now and until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn and they went out to the Mount of Olives, and this is a representation, as you can see here, kind of just a, a picture. This is not what it really looked like, but just a an artist's representation of where Jesus is actually going to get ready to pass the cup. So again, let's go over that. So he broke the bread, and what's the bread represent? That's right. It represents his body. Then he took the cup, and what does the cup represent? It represents the shedding of his blood. So let's take a look at this. So how did Jesus set an example of obedience for us? So if we go back to that question, how was he obedient? Let's think about that for a minute. How was he obedient and he showed his love? Well, who didn't he follow? He didn't do what Judas wanted him to do. He followed what the Lord wanted him to do. So he wasn't selfish at all. He knew that God had a different plan for him than we think we do, what he should have done. So let's review these eggs again. There's egg one, egg two, and egg three. In the first egg, again, we found the donkey. The donkey represents Jesus' triumphant entry on Palm Sunday, which represents he came in with peace. Then the second egg, in the resurrection egg, we found 30 coins of silver, which represents Judas betraying Jesus. Because Judas had a different thing in mind. He was upset with Jesus. He wanted them to attack the Romans and go in there and battle. But Jesus says, no, no, this ain't the time for this. I'm coming with peace. I have a different mission in mind. Then the third one, the third egg, resurrection egg, is the cup that represents the Last Supper, which represents to remember the breaking of the bread and also the actually shedding of his blood in the cup. So, that is what represents our three eggs today, our resurrection eggs. So let's go ahead and let's drive this home. So, the Easter season. I want to encourage you, all of you, to ask God to help you to become more obedient. Spend time in the Bible every day. 
to ask God to help you to remember to follow him. Jesus set the example, as we saw here in these eggs right here, the first ones. He will show us the way. Easter is coming. Jesus has come to set us free from our sin. And it is up to you to lay down selfish desires and to follow Jesus' example. So let's put our hands together and let's just close with prayer. Dear God, we thank you for sending Jesus to come to be the perfect example of love and obedience. I pray that each and every one of us can become more like you and be that example of obedience. As it says in our Bible verse in 2 Corinthians, it says, if we believe in you, we become a new creation and the old has gone away. Lord, hide that in our heart to become more like you, not to be like Judas and be selfish and to try or do our own things, but to be obedient to you, Lord. Again, we thank you for this first part of the resurrection eggs, part one, which is uh, we saw in egg one the donkey, and egg two we saw the coins, and the third egg we saw a cup, and the cup of your shedding of your blood. Again, Lord, we give this time to you and thank you for your word, and now we look forward to going on to part two. In your blessed name, Lord Jesus, amen, amen. Hello, my name is Arlene Bell and welcome to Weirder Things, the show that explores the strange, the unknown, and the just plain odd. My guest tonight was with us not very long ago. After witnessing a strange phenomenon in his chicken coop, and guess what? He's back. Please welcome Ernie Portnoy. The chicken man, that's right. I got some chicken stuff for you. Well, Ernie, it's so great to have you back. I see you have brought more eggs yes. with you. Yes, I have, ma'am. Right here, I have. Are those chickens laying some strange eggs again? <laughs> you can certainly say that, that's for sure. Well, what have the chickens left for you this time? Well, ma'am, I went to the chicken coop again the other morning, and you know Betsy, she's the one who started it all. She laid this here orange egg. Hmm. And what do you have inside? Hmm, let's take a look. I don't know. Hmm, well, those look like to me like some hands folded in prayer, don't they? Well, I kind of like thought they were like supervillain hands, you know, like rubbing hands together like <laughs> an evil delight. But now that you say they look like praying hands, I guess they do look like praying hands, I guess. Uh-huh, and hmm. what did the next chicken lay? Well, Sydney, let me tell you what she did. Check and put that down right there. She laid here this green egg right here. Let me show you what Sydney laid. This green egg. Oh, look at that. Oh, looks, okay. What is that? It's like a little mini whip, I guess. Uh, it looks a little bit dangerous to me. <laughs> I guess it would be if you were a hamster, if you know what I mean. It wouldn't do too much to us, but it's like a whip, I guess. <laughs> and what about the third egg? What's inside of the third oh, egg? Well, Snowflake, she got real colorful here, and she yelled here, this yellow leg. Let me show you what she did. She laid this little chicken, I think, a little boy chicken. Uh, you mean a rooster? <laughs> yeah, a rooster. That's my man. Yeah, that's right. A rooster. <laughs> uh, yes, ma'am. I don't think anything to do with this, but I don't even understand any other eggs why she would do this. I don't know what it has to do with eggs, though. Well, I'm not so sure, Ernie. You remember how those last three eggs were part of the Easter story? Yeah. Well, guess what? I think these three might be the next part of our story. Get out of here. Are you kidding me? Well, Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray just before everything went bad. Mm, that's right. He prayed that God would spare him from all the horrible things that were about to happen to him. Mm. But he also said that if this wasn't possible, well, he would follow God's will and obey. Well, my goodness, sounds like he was afraid. He was afraid. He knew he was going to be hurt. Wow, you mean they were going to take that whip and, and hurt him? Well, not that whip, but a brutal, dangerous whip. Jesus was beaten with 39 lashes. And he had a crown of thorns placed on his head, and it was physically painful. And it was humiliating to hear the soldiers, they were making fun of him. Oh, not cool. That's just terrible. But that still doesn't explain the rooster. What well, about the rooster? That was probably the worst pain of all. All of Jesus' friends, they deserted him. And he was arrested by his enemies. Mm. And one friend named Peter denied knowing Jesus, not just one time, but three times. Wow, three times. You mean Jesus went all through that for Peter? And Peter said he didn't even know the guy? Oh, that's awful. Yeah, it really is. 
But it's a good reminder that we need to be bold and unafraid to say that we mm. love Jesus. Amen. Jesus went through so much for us, and he wasn't afraid to be mocked, mm. and he wasn't afraid to be made fun of. He was willing to be physically and emotionally hurt so he could save us. Mm. Huh. Why would we ever be ashamed of him? Golly, you mean Jesus, the followers are actually afraid to say they loved him? That's no crazy. one likes being made fun of. No one likes being That's mocked. Tough. But if we truly love Jesus, we will be willing to suffer the same things he did because he did it for us. Wow. My chickens are wiser than I could ever dream of. They've given me mm. a lot to think about. And I'm mm. sure all of our viewers, too, We'll yeah. have to have him back again. Ernie, I can't wait to hear what the chickens do next. Well, we'll see you next time on Weirder Things. Bye now. Hello, Connection Kids. It's my turn to deliver the next part of our story, our second part. And I want to start out uh, by telling you our bottom line. I want you to think about something. Do not be ashamed to say that you believe in Jesus. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. I'm going to start out just with a little bit of, of talking about what Mr. Richard said, just so that we can kind of sum everything up as I teach you the next three eggs. We started cracking open a unique set of Easter eggs. Now these eggs were not filled with candy, but they were filled with items that tell us the story of Jesus. We saw how Jesus came into Jerusalem a week before his death, and he was riding on a donkey like a king coming in peace. And then we found a coin, and that reminded us of the betrayal of Judas. And then the third egg, we saw a cup, and that reminded us of the love and the obedience of Jesus. Jesus chose to come and die for us because he loved us. He had the same free will that you and I do, and he could have said no. It was never even a question for him. Jesus loved us so much that he was willing to do anything to save us, but that doesn't mean it was easy for him. And I want to talk to you guys about the next egg. And the next egg is praying hands. And when you look at this picture, you will actually see um, hands together praying. And there's a question there that says, what do the praying hands represent? Jesus went to the garden to pray the night before his betrayal. The way Jesus prayed that night shows us how fearful that Jesus was. Everything wasn't perfect. It wasn't going to be what he wanted to go through, but it was what he was willing to go through. It was about what was going to happen to him. And I want to read to you in Mark 14, 32 to 42. It says, they went to a place called Gethsemane and Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him and he began to to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. I want you to stay here and I want you to keep watch. So going a little farther, he fell to the ground and he prayed that if possible, this hour might pass from him. That if he didn't have to go through this, if some way he could not have to do what he didn't want to do. He didn't want to go through pain, just like we don't want to go through pain. But then he said, not what I will, but what you will. So whatever God you want to happen, I'm willing to do. And then he returned to his disciples and he found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you just keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more, Jesus went away and he began to pray again. And when he came back, he found them sleeping again because their eyes were heavy. They were exhausted. They did not know what to say. So returning the third time, he said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Enough. The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. See, Jesus already knew what was going to happen to him, but 
He loved his heavenly father so much. He went to him and he asked him, Lord, if there's something else that could happen, if there's a possible way that I don't have to go through this, then please let it be. But he also knew that whatever God's will was is what he was willing to do. I have a picture that I want you to look at that's going to come up on the screen. And you see Jesus praying at the rock, looking up at his heavenly father. Jesus was overwhelmed with emotion. He knew what he had to do to save us. And he knew how brutal that it was going to be. His disciples had no clue what he was about to face. And they could not even imagine how Jesus was feeling at that very moment. Even as he cried and he prayed his heart out, they were sleeping. They were completely unaware of what was about to happen. I have a question, and it says, what did Jesus pray for in the garden? Well, you heard in the scripture that he was fearful. He knew what was going to happen to him. He had a lot to pray for at that very moment. He was afraid. If there was another way to save us, Jesus would have gladly taken it. He knew that our only hope meant suffering, and he was willing to suffer for us, and that is what he did. Well, I want to talk about our next egg, and I have a question. What does the whip represent in the Easter story? See, when you open up the next egg, it has a small little whip on the inside. It's a reminder of just how bad things got for Jesus. So our question is, what does the whip represent in the Easter story? And I want you to think about that as I read the scripture. The men who were guarding Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and demanded, prophesy, who hit you? And they said many other insulting things to him. Jesus was beaten with fists. He was beaten with a whip. He had his clothes stripped away. He had a crown of thorns that were placed on his head. You can see in the picture that you will um, be looking at, it will show a picture of Jesus with the crown of thorns on his head. And all night and all day, the men who were guarding him were mocking him and laughing at him. They made fun of him for saying that he was king of the Jews and the Messiah. Jesus was humiliated. He was shamed publicly in front of everyone. But the greatest pain that he felt didn't come from a whip. It didn't even come from an unbelieving guard. It came from one of his own friends. This is the question that I have for you. What were some of the sad things that happened to Jesus? And when you read in the scriptures, you can find out some of the sad, horrible things that Jesus went through. I want to talk to you about the final egg that I will be talking about today. When you open up that egg, inside of it, it has a rooster. Well, the next egg is a rooster that's inside, and some of you might already know this story, but we're going to find out what it says in the scripture. What does the rooster represent in the Easter story? So I'm going to read this to you. It comes from Matthew 26, 69 to 75. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said, but he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. And then he went out to the gateway where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, this fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth and he denied it again with an oath. I don't know that man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely, surely you are one of them. Your accent gives it away. And then he began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. And immediately a rooster crowed. And then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside, and he wept bitterly. I have a picture, and it actually shows Peter, and he's looking away, and you can see the rooster, and you can see some people pointing at him, and you can see Jesus in the background. Before the garden, before Jesus' arrest, Peter vowed that he would never leave Jesus' side. But when Jesus was arrested, 
Peter was fearing for his life. He denied Jesus not once, not twice, but three times, just as Jesus has said would happen. He turned his back on Jesus, even as Jesus was preparing to die for him. So I have a question for you. Why was Peter ashamed to say that he knew Jesus? I want you to really think about that. Here's my main point. Jesus was willing to be beaten, mocked, ridiculed, and made fun of for our sake. He never wavered. He never ran away. He never hid. He never backed down. He did what was necessary because he loved us. How sad that so many believers are ashamed of the Savior who was unashamed of them. So many of us hide our faith. We live just as sinfully as our friends when we're not at church. We never share what we believe with anyone else. Jesus was unafraid of us, and we need to be unafraid of, unashamed of him. We should be Christians not just one day or two days out of the week, we should be Christians 24-7. We need to be willing to live our faith every day, not just on Sunday. Well, I have a little object lesson for you. And I have an egg. And inside of my egg, I have something that is not part of the resurrection eggs. It's not part of what you're going to be seeing in our story this week. But it was found in this egg. And inside of it, I have a mask. And I want you to think about when you're looking at this mask, who do you think about when you look at this mask? The mask reminds me of Peter. Peter loved Jesus with all of his heart. I believe that he really meant it when he told Jesus that he was willing to die for him. And years later, he did. But on that night that Jesus was betrayed, Peter hid. He hid behind a mask. He tried to be someone that he was not. He denied that he even knew Jesus. He might as well have been wearing a mask, something similar like this. Many Christians wear masks. When we're away from church and we're away from our church friends, sometimes we hide our faith. We're ashamed. We don't even want to say that we love Jesus because we're afraid of being mocked, maybe teased or maybe laughed at. Imagine if Jesus had behaved that way, we would not even have a Savior. Jesus suffered so much for us, all because he loved us. Let's not hide our faith. Let's not hide behind a mask. Let's show the world how much we love Jesus so that they can see how much he loves them. And as we finish up our talk today, I just have just a couple of more things to say. It's not easy to be a Christian in a non-Christian world. We're in a, we're in a world full of people that don't know Jesus. And we want to fit in. We don't want our friends to laugh at us or tease us or, or maybe not even want to be our friend at all. It's much easier sometimes to just be silent, to just follow the crowd, to just blend in. We weren't saved so that we could blend in. We were saved so that we can carry the message of Easter to the world. That's what we were called to do. The friends whose acceptance you desire, the ones that you're afraid are going to mock you or tease you, you know that Jesus loves them too. He wants them to know that he could save them from their sins. How can Jesus save them if we're afraid to live for Jesus? And I want you to just bow your head for a minute as we finish up our time together. This week, I, I want to challenge you to live, live out your faith every day. Be willing to stand out. Be willing to made, be made fun of. Be willing to be different. If someone asked you about your faith, don't be afraid to share it. Dear Heavenly Father, we just ask you to give us the courage, Lord, to give us the courage to tell others about you, to not be afraid to be mocked or to laughed at, to be laughed at, but just go out, Lord, and just spread the gospel because you love us so much. We thank you, God, that you died for our sins.
that we all may be saved. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, that ends lesson one and lesson two. Hope you had a good time learning about when Jesus came in on a donkey, riding in Jerusalem. And remember about peace. And then we went all the way to part two, where we saw Jesus uh, got denied by Peter three times, and we saw the rooster. So remember that. But remember to study your Bible verse, hide his word in your heart, and we'll see you next week.